Thanks, everybody. Hundreds of millions of people owe their lives to antibiotics. And chances are, some of those people are in this room today. Whether you took the antibiotics directly, or it was a parent or a grandparent who needed antibiotics, saving your life in more of an indirect manner. Now, as good as antibiotics are, we have to think about what life was like before they existed to truly appreciate them. Before antibiotics, nine out of 10 children with bacterial meningitis didn't survive. Things like strep throat and ear infections could be fatal diseases. And 11% of people with simple skin infections died. Just think about how many times you've been sick this past year. And I'm not talking about feeling deathly ill. I'm talking about the last time you felt a little woozy, so you took the day off work and power watched a few seasons of your favorite TV show on Netflix. A <laughs> hundred years ago, any of those times could have killed you, and that would have been totally normal. So what's wrong with the way we make antibiotics right now? The way we make antibiotics right now is called, um, well, it's what I like to call the car company method. We'll take a current antibiotic, we'll soup it up a little, give it some horsepower, maybe some leather seats, and then we market it as a brand new antibiotic. The problem with this is that if you're targeting bacteria with an antibiotic you've only changed slightly, they only have to change themselves slightly to become resistant. And bacteria are far better at doing this than we are at developing new drugs. And so if we don't start thinking outside the box about how we're going to develop new drugs to treat these antibiotics, um, we're going to start living in a world where those statistics I quoted earlier will once again become a terrifying reality. So where do these answers lie? I think the answers, or at least some of them, lie in the way that proteins move. Now proteins need to be able to move to function. If you stop a protein from moving, it doesn't work anymore. And so in theory, if you have a way of observing proteins moving, you can see if something's able to stop these movements and could potentially function as an antibiotic. And this is exactly what I've been doing with my master's thesis time. It turns out that by fluorescently labeling proteins at very specific locations, you can actually see minute differences between protein structural conformations. This means we can actually watch proteins open and close in real time, and just by measuring the amount of light that's being emitted from the fluorescent dyes attached to them. This assay I've developed allows us to screen a mass amount of compounds and pick out the ones that prevent these movements and use them to develop some potentially new drugs to treat these ever-resistant bacteria. And that is how you translate protein movements into novel antibiotics.